Yes. Hey, hey, we're tough. On my mark, go. Pull, 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 pull. How did ancient cultures move large blocks of stone? People keep asking us this in comments to almost every video we make about ancient megaliths, dolmens, fortresses, temples and pyramids. So we had this idea of an experiment pulling rocks by hand. But haven't these experiments been done before? Here, for instance, you can see a Danish experiment pulling a 9-ton slab up a mountainside. Wally Wallington built his Stonehenge replica all alone, by hand. There's also Italian footage from 1928 showing bulls dragging a 350-ton obelisk commissioned by Mussolini and footage from around the same time of some German workers extracting a large grinding wheel from a quarry. There's ethnographic evidence that Oceania cultures used to build massive stone structures, further evidenced by a recent video of a dolmen being built. But we couldn't find a high-quality video that would capture all the stages and subtleties of the process. Meanwhile, questions kept piling up. When we released a film about the sarcophagi of the Serapium, where I described a possible scheme for transporting sarcophagi in narrow underground corridors and did some math, we got even more questions. I promised in that video that we'd someday conduct a slab transportation experiment. But organizing it turned out to be no easy task. By October 2023, we were in the final stages of getting ready for the experiment. Entrepreneur and traveler Konstantin Anisimov agreed to finance it, while Ivan Semyon, archaeologist and reconstructor, director of the Carmen Blur archaeological site, volunteered to help organize the experiment and find a site for it. Carmen Blur includes the ruins of the ancient fortress of Uratu, and there are lots of basalt blocks right under your feet there that could be used in the experiment. On October 23rd, we arrived at Yerevan, Armenia, and drove to the Kamia Blur site, where we helped prepare a place for the experiment. First, we decided to conduct a test experiment by moving a 2-3 to three ton block before attempting to move something like a 50 ton sarcophagus, like those found in Serapium, Egypt. This is similar to an average stone block used in the Giza pyramids. We planned to hold it for 20 to 25 meters, or about 70 to 80 feet. In this video, we'll actually show you the test experiment. It was obvious to us that constructing a structure from large stone blocks involves multiple complex manipulations that include cutting slabs in a quarry, lifting them to a desired height, and adjusting them with such precision where you couldn't push a razor between two blocks. Operations of this scale were way beyond the capabilities of our small team, so we decided to replicate one specific manipulation, moving a slab horizontally. We used a crane to transport the slabs to the experiment site and place them on the sled, and a power shovel to dig up holes on the site. We also have plans to experiment with lifting blocks and fitting them together, but that's a challenge for the future, as we can't do everything at once. None of our team had experience in manually transporting stone blocks, so we had to learn by trial and error, and we did make some errors in the process. But see for yourself. By the evening of October 23rd, we had the sled and the log rollers ready and a crossbeam installed for hitching the rope. We'd also purchased all necessary equipment. What we lacked was the required number of volunteers, but a local school promised to provide them. First, we had to find the rocks we could use for the experiment that could be transported to the site and placed on the sled. Rather than several smaller rocks, we went for one bigger one.
Suddenly, a group of local schoolgirls turned up at the site. That experiment was made possible by Konstantin Anisimov, who kindly helped finance it. You can also help us make our experiments and create videos about them. Consider supporting us on Patreon. We post lots of unique content there for our subscribers. The link is up here and in the description. This is very special oil. Let me just say the magic word. O oh, Osiris, O oh, Anubis, O oh, bottle cap, get off. O oh, Anubis, he who is on top of the mountain, give me the power. O oh, gods of the duet and those who will be pulling this rope. Everyone ready? Yeah! Pull! 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 Okay, let's add more rollers. That's too little weight. After the first successful try, we added two more rocks. Then, unexpectedly, the girl volunteers left the site. Are they leaving? Yeah. Hey, wait! Now we had only 12 people to pull the rope. Now we had about 2.5 tons of slabs on the sled, which is the average weight of blocks in the Great Pyramid. But then we ran into a problem. Hey, hey, we're tough! It's a battle pickaxe. We'll rip apart those Assyrians. Here you can see our first mistake that we we'll fix later. The pulley is about 40 meters or 120 feet away. The rope, being elastic, stretches a lot at this distance. Dividing the volunteers in two teams, positioned that far away from the sled, is inefficient. Pull! Pull! That squeaky sound. Not moving? Our next mistake was placing the robots too close to each other, making them block each other and stop the sled. They're rubbing against each other, so they can't roll, and we're pulling the sled over them. Yeah, not rolling. We need to space them out, or they won't roll at all. We need to oil them too. No need to oil them, we just need to remove every second roller, and that'll do the trick. Our team also figured out that the weight of the rocks was unevenly distributed over the sled, so we decided to reposition the slabs by a little bit. We're ready! Pull! 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 Log in the way! Go! Log stuck! Wait, wait, a log's got stuck. <sighs> now the entire team is holding the rope right next to the sled, so as to keep it taut. We also thought we'd try it without the beam. For the sled to move at a steady pace, the roller logs must be roughly the same size. Elementary? Yes. But you can't nail it until you try it. Get ready! Pull! 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 Stop! Looks like we finally managed to build the right configuration by trial and error. 
The sled was now rolling forward fast and easily. As you can see, if all's been done right, the load will roll even on uneven surfaces like this. But we were yet to make our main mistake. Pull! 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 The sled's broken down. The roller logs were all of different diameter, so there was a wide gap between two rollers and one of the slabs just slid into it. 20 meters, that's almost it. So we've put it 20 meters, yes, 20. Thanks to Valeria Avramenko, we've got a 3D image of our sled and a calculation of the total weight. Based on the basalt density of 2,700 kilograms or 5,952 pounds by one cubic meter, we got 2,511 kilograms or 5,511 pounds. So what did we achieve? Despite the little screw-up, we managed to pull the sled with a load of around 2.5 tons for a distance of about 20 meters or 60 feet. So we got quite the result we'd hoped for. Only 14 people pulled during the critical stage of the experiment, including a 5-year-old boy named Timofey and a few girls. Thanks to the experiment, we made some important insights, you could call them life hacks, that will help us prepare for our next experiment involving a heavier weight. Fancy taking part in our experiment? Or you could suggest a location to conduct it, or any other help, or maybe you've got some logistical ideas. Tell us in the comments. Or maybe you're skeptical about this experiment. Maybe you think our team knows nothing about pulling huge rocks. Then tell us what you think we should improve, or better still, send us videos of your own experiments. If you wish to support this project, then subscribe to our Boosty page. You'll find the link in the description below. I'm Alexander Sokolov. See you next time.